Hello everyone, I'm Justin Bender, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital in Toronto and creator of the Canadian Portfolio Manager blog. In the first installment in my Understanding ETF series, we toured the Canadian equity ETF landscape, covering solutions you can use for your investment portfolio's domestic stock allocation. Today I want to switch gears and head south of the border to explore some of the US equity ETFs you can add in to diversify your Canadian heavy portfolio. In our last episode, we learned Canada created the world's first ETF in 1990. The US wasn't far behind us though. In January 1993, State Street Global Advisors launched the first successful US listed ETF, the Spider S&P 500 ETF, or SPY. SPY's goal was to follow the S&P 500 index, which Standard & Poor's created in the 1950s to track the performance of around 500 larger US companies. SPIDER is an acronym for Standard & Poor's Depository Receipt. It's trademarked by Standard & Poor's Financial Services, but the acronym is so popular it's often confused as a generic term for any S&P 500 tracking ETF. SPY's largest holdings include a number of familiar names most Canadians will instantly recognize. Whether you're investing in US or Canadian dollars, there are quite a few ETFs that track the S&P 500 index and trade on either the US or Canadian stock exchanges. Each company in the S&P 500 index is weighted according to its float-adjusted market capitalization. For more information on float-adjusted market caps, please watch my last video on understanding Canadian equity ETFs. Not to be outdone by the success of the spiders, Vanguard launched their own version of ETFs in 2001, originally known as Vanguard Index Participation Receipts or Vipers for short. The Vanguard Extended Market ETF, VXF, was the second ETF Vanguard launched. You may be familiar with some of its holdings as well. VXF complements SPY by following the S&P Completion Index, which in turn tracks the performance of over 3,000 US mid, small, and micro-cap companies. By allocating about 82% of your investment dollars to SPY and the remaining 18% to VXF, you gain float-adjusted market cap exposure to most of the US stock market at an annual MER of about 0.09%. There's also a single index that follows a combination of the S&P 500 index and the S&P completion index. It's called the S&P total market index. This index includes about 3,825 companies and covers the broad US stock market. Luckily, there also are ETFs that invest in all companies within the S&P total market index. So you can invest in one fund instead of two and achieve the same goal either way. The iShares core S&P total US stock market ETF, ITOT, trades on the US stock exchange in US dollars. When held in a tax-deferred account, such as an RSP, Lira, RIF, or LIF, the usual 15% withholding tax on foreign dividends does not apply, saving Canadian investors about 0.26% per year in taxes. Its sister ETF, the iShares Core S&P US Total Market Index ETF, XUU, trades on the Canadian Stock Exchange in Canadian dollars. When held in a registered account, the 15% withholding tax on foreign dividends is lost, resulting in a tax drag of about 0.26% per year. Both ITOT and XU have lower annual costs than the weighted average cost of SPY and VXF, which makes them more cost-effective alternatives to the multi-fund approach. In choosing between ITOT and XUU, the decision is typically driven by the impact of foreign withholding taxes. That's a complicated topic, beyond the scope of today's discussion. But at the end of this video, I've summarized the estimated tax drag of several broad market US equity ETFs when a Canadian investor holds them in various account types. You can also refer to our white paper on the subject, as well as our YouTube videos on the Norbert's Gambit strategy, which is a cheap way to convert your loonies to dollars for purchasing US listed ETFs in your registered accounts. Vanguard has also released a number of ETFs that provide similar exposure to US equity markets. Their most popular ETFs follow the CRISP indices. CRISP stands for Center for Research in Security Prices. The CRISP US large cap index includes about 602 US large cap stocks, so its exposure is very similar to the S&P 500 index. If you combine about 85% of this large cap index with roughly 13% of the CRISP US small cap index and about 2% of the CRISP US micro cap index, you end up with the CRISP US total market index, which is very similar in composition to the S&P total market index. Although Vanguard offers US listed ETFs that track the CRISP US large cap index and the CRISP US small cap index, they do not yet offer an ETF that tracks the CRISP US micro cap index. That means combining multiple ETFs for total market exposure is not possible here. However, Vanguard does provide a pair of US listed and Canadian listed ETFs that follow the broader CRISP US total market index, tracking the performance of over 3,600 companies, including these missing microcap stocks. The Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, VTI, trades on the US stock exchange in US dollars, similar to ITOT. When held in a tax deferred account, such as an RSP, Lira, RIF, or LIF, the usual 15% withholding tax on foreign dividends does not apply saving investors about 0.26% per year in taxes. Its sister ETF, the Vanguard US Total Market Index ETF, VUN, trades on the Canadian Stock Exchange in Canadian dollars, similar to XUU. 
When held in a registered account, the 15% withholding tax on foreign dividends is lost, resulting in a tax drag of about 0.26% per year. Again, remember that U.S.-listed ETFs like ITOT and VTI are only effective at reducing the foreign withholding tax drag in tax-deferred accounts, such as RSPs, LIRAs, RIFs, and LIFs. So, we've now presented four basic single fund choices for broadening your diversification by employing U.S. equity ETFs. Since 2005, the performance difference between the S&P Total Market Index and the crisp U.S. Total Market Index has been minimal, so investors should feel confident that any one of the four ETFs discussed will provide them with the returns of the broad U.S. stock market. Before we wrap, let's review why it might be worth adding in U.S. equity ETFs to begin with. In my last video, Understanding Canadian Equity ETFs, I mentioned that nearly 75% of companies within broad market Canadian equity ETFs were concentrated in the financial, energy, industrials, and materials sectors. As depicted in this graph, the U.S. stock market is much more diversified across sectors, with only about one-third of companies operating within these four sectors. By including an allocation of broad market U.S. equity ETFs, Canadian investors can significantly increase the sector diversification within their own portfolio. If you've made it this far though, you're now probably wondering about the rest of the world. The good news is I'll be covering that in my next Understanding ETFs video, so stay tuned.